notice this in my previous video. I'm here in an alley, recording a message. Another guy walks around and right here, he gets a phone call and begins to talk loudly. Why didn't that individual call him just several seconds earlier when he was walking towards his place? Why is it right that he's on his way here that then the phone rings and he begins to talk loudly while I'm here recording a video? There are no such thing. There's no such thing as a, co as a coincidence. Evil spirits, they use people to take action against the movement of the Holy Spirit. So, when you're doing God's will, expect retaliation one way or the other. What you saw in the previous video is retaliation. Demons couldn't come here and shut me down directly, so they used anyone they had access to to hinder me. So. Understand the following also. Just because you are 100% correct does not guarantee that others will comply with you being 100% correct. It won't. When you think that just because you are righteous, that therefore people are going to honor your righteousness. Well, have you seen what they did to Christ, the righteous one? Look, there is this singing that's often used by worldlings. That is, I'm not perfect. Or they would say, nobody's perfect. Let's examine that statement for a while. Perfect has to do with perfection. And what's perfection? Having everything in the right and best conditions. So having something in the best conditions, that's perfect. Or above perfect, you have excellent. Excellent means nothing can be improved of, uh, about it. So if something is excellent, wow, you can't improve anything because it's excellent. When something is perfect, means ah, it fits correctly. So perfection means something fits, something works. So, if we talk about perfection, we talk about the situation where something fits or something works, that or something is also safe. When you talk about excellency, that means that something in a, it's in a condition that nothing else can be improved about it. Now, this statement, nobody is perfect. What did Christ say? Christ said, be, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. He was talking about their attitude. He was talking about being flexible and practical. It's like the Heavenly Father is flexible and practical. So perfection for human beings implies that we imitate the Heavenly Father. So when you imitate the Heavenly Father, you're perfect. That's it. But human beings, which most of us, most of our speeches don't follow the Heavenly Father, we have our expectations. And when something matches our expectations, then we consider that perfect. We give it a pass. We give it praise. So perfection, according to world links, implies that you get along and fit, 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 ease smoothly with expectations of society. This was about. And that creates a problem. Because society is a fear construct, and God has not given us spirit of fear. So when you have fear-based expectations, of course no human being is going to function smoothly with those fear-based expectations because we're not designed to be fearful, absolutely not. So indeed, according to worldly terms, what is perfect because what they consider perfection is a hoax. But now, let's go deeper with it. Some see through this scam of worldly perfection, and they know that perfection, real perfection relates to safety. When human beings imitate their Heavenly Father, they are safe. So if someone understands the true meaning of perfection, that means that we are safe because we emulate the Heavenly Father. If people understand the true meaning of perfection and they keep on saying, I'm not perfect, nobody's perfect, especially when they say nobody's perfect, what are they saying? They are saying that they know that they should be safe to be around, but they have stuff they don't want to give up and they know very well that the stuff they don't want to give up is going to cause some type of unsafety somewhere, both with themselves as well as with other people. 
whether in focus or not, they know that they carry stuff with them that they shouldn't carry. But they're not willing to face themselves and nor go through the healing process nor the deliverance process. Why? Because once they're delivered, they need to comply with justice, which implies giving up all types of controlling. So people that cling on to controlling, where it's controlling in the sense that they want to flee, or controlling in the sense that they're using violence so other people get what they want, or whatever type of controlling it is, when they hold on to controlling, they display in God, they know that they're not safe to be around all the time. So actually, they're not safe at all. And they know that they will, that they will, be, that they will be blamed, and rightfully so, when that unsafety manifests. But they don't want to be blamed. So they want to bail themselves out of the blame of being blameworthy. Because them, them knowing that it's their obligation to be safe, but they don't seek for solutions to be safe, that's blameworthy. But they don't want to deal with the blame of being blameworthy. Now, they don't have to remain blameworthy if they just repent and change their your mind. Because they don't want to do that because they don't want to comply with justice. They just want the ease. They want the relief of controlling. That's what they cling on to. So they remain blameworthy because that relief they're clinging on to, that, or that controlling, it causes pollution, which is dangerous. So when you have people that don't want to deal with reality, they become blameworthy, they become delusional, they become, and they eventually are dangerous. So they want to go through life smoothly without being challenged. So one way they intend to achieve this is by being open about their, their I'd say, their violence. For example, if someone is in pain and they see you, and for some reason they feel comfortable dumping that pain on you, saying, I don't like you, what do you think you are, I can't stand you, blah, 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 what is there? They are transferring their pain onto you. That's violence. You can't justify this. But if they do that and say, hey, at least I'm honest with how I feel about you, people are going to say, well, at least he's direct, at least with him you know uh, uh, what you're dealing with. No. Even if it's handy and practical to know what you're dealing with, he should not be violent. Period. But violent people, they're cowards. They don't want to uh, face themselves, so they want to build themselves out through black no. So that's why when people say nobody's perfect, they're actually saying, uh, hey, there's going to be stuff happening, there's going to be stuff I'm going to do, or there's going to be something, there's going to be times I'm going to be neglectful, and you know what? Don't blame me. I tell you beforehand, that's just the way I am. So if you continue to be involved with me, it's all on you. No, no, no. You should be safe to be around. And if you're not safe to be around, you should repent. And if you don't repent, then the conscience must follow. Whether other people remain involved with you or not, does not, does not cancel your obligation to be safe. But violent people, they want to be bailed out. So that's why when they say, nobody's perfect, I'm not perfect, they're actually saying, don't expect me to be safe. If you're around me, expect some type of danger. And because I told you beforehand that you can expect danger, well, it's on you when the danger manifests, you need to deal with it. It's their way of gaslighting you and blaming you so that they don't have to do what they're supposed to do. Now, why am I making this video about nobody's perfect? Because often we're not aware of the gaslighting and blackmail behind the statements. Now, there are people that use a statement and they don't mean any harm. It's just a cultural statement that they copy, which is not wise to do. But that such people exist. But most people that use this phrase, nobody's perfect, they just want to dodge. That means throw away, they want to push away responsibility towards the Heavenly Father and towards the, the human species of which they are part of by seeking a bail out from the consequence of the ruin they produce. Just because Satan is open that he's Satan doesn't mean it's okay for him to be Satan. Okay? So if Satan is openly acting as Satan, um, he's to blame for openly acting as Satan. He's, he's to blame for being Satan, and he's to blame for openly thinking he can get away with just being Satan, just being dangerous openly. So he's, he's blameworthy. But just as Satan 
wants to bail himself out by blaming you for them not doing what's right or for not being right, the same way violent people don't want to deal with anything. When you do something that is dangerous, they cut you off or take action immediately. Or maybe you don't do something that's dangerous, but you do something that, that goes against your expectations, they take action and choose you feel it. And then, and then they're right in it. But when they do something that doesn't add up, that's really out of line, that really cannot be justified, or they have the reasons, or, well, even if I did it, uh, you made me do it, or you need to um, be a bit more compassionate towards me, I went through a lot of stuff, or, you know what, or even if I did it, or so what, you need to find me to do it. If you can't do it, it's on you. It's, or they would say something as, the past is the past, I can't change the past. Okay, just because you can't change the past, doesn't mean that you can't take responsibility for what happened in the past. There are various blackmail statements that worldlings use just not to obey the Heavenly Father. And you know what? The Heavenly Father is not going to fight them. The Heavenly Father is going to hand them over to that, let's say, to that cancerous self destructive thinking. And eventually, if they persist in it, they will end up as reprobates. And later, uh, the Heavenly Father will deport them to the lake of fire. That's what the Heavenly Father does. The Heavenly Father is not going to uh, energize their fields. Because when you, res when you openly resist them, they're going to perceive that as an attack and they're going to play the victim. So the Heavenly Father is not going to energize them playing the victim. Does that mean now the Heavenly Father does not take action against them? He does. And so, sh so should we. When they are become persist in danger, we should take action to limit their danger. We should. Of course, the Heavenly Father has more resources, so there are certain things only he's supposed to do, but we also should take action to preserve sanity and safety in our species. So, believers are supposed to be perfect, and perfection means emulate the Heavenly Father, period. All human beings should be perfect, because all human beings ought to follow Christ, but many don't. So, don't be blackmailed by narcissistic statements. Be at peace.